So you may be wondering, what is the British Invasion? Well, let me tell you. The British Invasion all started when the Beatles first came to America February 7th, 1964. Their first single, I Want to Hold Your Hand, reached number one on the U.S. charts January 25th. A month later, they performed on The Ed Sullivan Show February 9th. With their British accents, suits, and matching hairstyles, they had boys and girls screaming in the crowd and all over the world. Before we get into this some more, let's backtrack a bit. The Beatles were not always the Beatles. In 1957, young John Lennon played the rhythm guitar in a skiffle band called The Quarrymen. Skiffle was a type of sound including jazz, blues, and American folk music. The bass player of the band introduced Lennon to James Paul McCartney, who was 15 at the time. John had only been a year older. Paul had gotten a spot in the band as their bassist, and George Harrison later joined in as the guitars. They played as the Quarrymen until 1959, where they struggled between the two band names, the Silver Beatles, as in the Bug, and the Silver Beats. So by forming the two together, they came up with the iconic band name as we know it today, the Beatles. Keep in mind, the Beatles got their inspiration from Elvis Presley. Elvis Presley was a big hit in the 50s and was said to have brought rock and roll and provocative dancing to the youth. Elvis was also a bit controversial because he was influenced by African American music, like Chuck Berry and Little Richard. People said he was stealing from them, but Elvis pleaded innocent on that charge. Funny how the Beatles got their inspiration from Elvis Presley, then later stole his spotlight when he was drafted into the US Army in 1953. In 1961, Brian Epstein first heard the band play in a place called Cavern Club in Liverpool. Brian convinced the band to sign a contract with him after attending many of their gigs. Shortly after, their drummer at the time, Pete Best, was replaced with Richard Starkey, or as we know him today, Ringo Starr. I quote John Lennon, I don't believe in Beatles, I just believe in me. Good point there. After all, he was the walrus. I could be the walrus. I'd still have to bum rides off of people. The Rolling Stones soon made it into the mix of iconic bands part of the British Invasion when they came to New York City June 1st of 1964. The Stones brought the attention to them in October of the same year when they performed Time Is On My Side on The Ed Sullivan Show. That was their second arrival to New York City, which was a big moment for them as fans were demanding for them at the JFK airport. Unlike the Beatles, Ed Sullivan didn't like them too much. They were much more of an unclean act compared to the Beatles, more of like a bad boy version compared to the Beatles. They brought the blues back to America with their rougher sounding songs and their frontman Mick Jaggers' outgoing persona. The guitarist Keith Richards and lead singer Mick Jagger met at a railway station in 1961 at Teenagers, where, later on, they formed the band The Rolling Stones. They formed the band with Brian Jones on guitar and various instruments, Charlie Watts on drums, and Bill Wyman on the bass. Similar to the Beatles, a band was formed in the early 60s at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. Any guesses? Well, none other than the Mercy Beats. The founding members of the band, Billy Kingsley and Tony Crane, named the band in 1962. The name comes from the rock and roll style of music formed in the UK that consists of guitars, drums, and strong vocals. Their first hit was 1963 single, It's Love That Really Counts. Other bands made it into the invasion, such as The Who, The Kinks, The Zombies, and other bands that are just as good but are not as known are bands like Freddy and the Dreamers, The Honeycombs, and The Searchers. There's more where that came from, but for now, let's focus on the second wave of the British invasion. In the 70s, UK bands started to bring punk fashion and music into America. Bands like the Sex Pistols started a teenage movement that the press called Punk into America. With their spiked hair, leather clothing, and awful profanity, they were a hit. In 1976, they released their first single called Anarchy in the UK. On December 1st of 1976, the Sex Pistols were the first to use profanity on live television. That was on London Regional, where they were a last minute pick for the interview as the band Queen couldn't make it. Their first American tour was pretty disastrous as they broke up nine days later after their first gig in America, January of 1978. They were a pretty rebellious band, which influenced the teens and started the punk movement. The Clash was a band that also had a punk rock impact on teens in the 70s. The band was formed in the heart of London after they saw the impact the Sex Pistols had on their generation. They influenced them, they inspired them. Their first single, White Riot, made it into the 12th spot in the UK charts in March of 1977. February 7th of 1979, they played at Berkeley Theatre in California, where Jimi Hendrix had played in the past, as well as Bob Dylan. A psychedelic rock group, Pink Floyd, was formed in 1965 in London. They had a hit, which was called Adam Hart Mother, as well as Metal, 
They started their U.S. tour in 1970, right in New York, ending in New Orleans. Their spacey rock music and their heavy use of drugs was a big impact on the teens. Queen is a multi-genre rock band formed in the 1970s in London. They are one of the most influential and iconic bands of the 70s, just next to the Beatles. This band, with their first self-titled album being in 1973, were inspired by the Beatles. From their third album, Sheer Heart Attack, they had a single, Killer Queen, which made it into the Billboard Hot 100 US charts in 1974. Their first gig in the US was as an opening band for a band called Mont the Hoople, and that was in Denver, Colorado in 1974. This band has many hits that we know today, such as Another One Bites Dust, Under Pressure, Bohemian Rhapsody, We Are The Champions, and many more. John Deacon, the bassist of the band, has created the most famous bass lines, which are the ones that get stuck in your head all day after you hear the song once, such as Under Pressure and Another One Bites Dust. How could I get away without talking a little bit about Led Zeppelin? Zeppelin, formed in 1968, was a combination of blues and rock music that hit America hard with its sound. Former guitarist of the Yardbirds, another band part of the British Invasion, Jimmy Page formed the band with Robert Plant in 1968. Their North American tour of 1968 to 1969 was a huge hit and boosted the band's popularity. Zeppelin's first hit was with their song Whole Lot of Love when it hit number 4 on the US charts in 1970. Do you wonder if any of your favorite artists were inspired by any of the bands from the British Invasion? Well, Kurt Cobain from Nirvana had wrote about a girl inspired by the Beatles. David Grohl, the guitarist of the band, said he wouldn't be a musician if it wasn't for the Beatles. Same with the rest of the band. Lady Gaga even got her name from a Queen song. Roger Taylor, the drummer of Queen, wrote the 1980s song Radio Gaga, which gave Stephanie Germanotha her name. The British Invasion started when the Beatles crazed fans all over the world with their performance on Ed Sullivan. The British Invasion had brought us Skiffle and Mercy Beat. It has brought us punk music and fashion, along with movies about these rock stars and their lives. Would music ever be the same if the British Invasion had not happened? Would it be the same without these bands? The answer is simply no. These bands had changed music history forever. Their legacy continues today. They played in the quarry. Oh, uh. They played as the quarry men until 1959. I'm gonna redo that. There's gonna be a lot of these. George Harrison soon later joined. <laughs> oh. Paul had soon gotten. And George Harrison soon later. Oh my God. <laughs> Paul had gotten a span. <laughs> The British invasion started when the Brit 